Americans are not prepared for what is coming. June 5th, 2024, as we sit today, American savings are drained, credit cards are maxed, and everybody is sitting on the edge watching inflation continue to increase. A 19% accumulative inflation, which we're going to break down today, and how they're destroying small businesses in America. We're going to break all this down. I'm going to share with you what I'm doing to protect my family. My name is Coach JV. What I work to do is make very complex macro and microeconomic strategies very simple so the normal everyday person can implement them. We've helped hundreds of people understand how we ensure our wealth during these volatile times. So if you're interested in understanding how I ensure my wealth, in the description of this video down below, you can click the link to set up a free consultation with my licensed insurance team in America and in Canada, or click my social media platform, click, click the link, you set up a free consultation. It's completely separate from my 3T Warrior Academy, which I talk about on the back end of the video. So let's dive right into this. So, man, so this is on May 3rd, 2024. The pandemic savings are gone. What's next for the consumer? The U.S. household savings rose and fell at unprecedented rates following the onset of the pandemic recession. Updated estimates suggest that these excess savings have been fully spent. However, consumer pending spending shows no signs of losing steam, raising questions about the future path. Okay, so the savings are drained. Consumers are continuing to spend because Americans' credit card debt hits a record high of $1.13 trillion. This was on February 6, 2024. So credit card debt has increased by $50 billion in fourth quarter of 2023. As Americans, we are heading towards a cliff, over $34 trillion in debt. Our taxes are going to pay the interest on that debt. American savings are drained. Rent has gone up like 20% over the past 24 months. And President Biden goes on there and shares that he has helped with inflation. What? Are you serious? He was claiming that inflation was at 9% when he came into office. That's not even accurate. It says it's very misleading when Biden says inflation used to be at 9%. Uh, Rubio told Fox News. This compounding is not like when it went down from 9 to 3%. This is building month after month. The better way to think of it is there's been an 18 to 19 percent over the past three years. So since Biden came into office, there's been a 19 percent accumulation inflation. So if you made a hundred thousand dollars in 2020, you now make about ninety one thousand dollars. The American savings are drained. Inflation is not cooling. They're not lowering interest rates right now. So the good news about this is if you are a manager, or excuse me, a manager, asset manager, I guess, if you are managing your own finances and understanding that during these times, a lot of people go to a flight to safety like BlackRock, why they're heading over to Bitcoin, why all these people told you cryptocurrency is a fraud and now asset managers are getting involved. That's why, guys, the system is broken and the solve is liquidity, on-demand liquidity in the public and private sector coming back together or coming more working together. But what's happening in America is our per current presidential uh, regime is pushing all this innovative innovation and technology outside the United States, and they are crushing small businesses. So we're going to listen to this uh, from the Forbes. It says the Fed and Treasury are doing everything they can to hurt small businesses. Now, Biden talks about raising taxes on the rich, but guess what that does? It hurts your job, guys. Because when the people making $400,000 a year or more in the big corporations get taxed more, guess what? They have to pay more for services. They have to let team members go. So let's listen to what uh, Forbes says about what's happening with the U.S. Treasury doing everything it can do to hurt small businesses. And the Treasury Department are hurting small businesses. Hello, I'm Steve Forbes, and this is What's Ahead, where you get the insights you need to better navigate these turbulent times. It's no secret that small businesses are being damaged by the Biden regime's unending avalanche of regulations, not to mention the prospect of even more taxes that will hit them hard. But two villains of smaller enterprises that are hardly ever mentioned are the Federal Reserve and the Treasury Department. Less than large companies count on short-term lending mm -hmm. to finance inventories and to expand. Both the Fed and Uncle Sam have become gargantuan short-term borrowers, they are sucking up resources mm -hmm. that would normally be available for productive use by the private sector, especially small businesses. 
Washington has issued over $6 trillion in treasury securities with maturities of less than 360 days. The Fed is no better. Since the financial crisis of 2008-2009, it bloated the size of its holdings of securities almost tenfold. Crazy. It added trillions of longer-term treasury bonds and mortgages. And to buy these securities, the Fed, in effect, borrows short-term from the financial markets. One category of short-term debt of the Federal Reserve is called reverse repurchase agreements, reverse repos for short. These are a favorite of money market funds. They total nearly $500 billion. The Fed also holds Listen, around guys. $3 trillion of bank reserves on which it pays interest of over 5%. The Fed and other central banks binged on buying long-term mm -hmm. bonds with the express purpose of suppressing interest rates, which sank to levels never seen before in human history. We even had the spectacle of negative interest rates. Japan. Japan was especially an advocate and practitioner of this. The ostensible purpose was to stimulate economic growth. The result was stagnation. With money almost free, governments piled on debt. Why not? The cost of financing this burgeoning borrowing declined as debt levels went up. But in the real world, mm. governments sucking more and more resources out of an economy leaves that economy poorer. Okay, so that's what we're dealing with right now. They sucked all the resources out of the economy. Now, Warren Buffett said it the best. I'm paraphrasing this. He said he had it easy, right? From when he was born to now his older age, it was free money, lower interest rates, guys. We are now taking the burden of where, think about it, the, the, the low interest rates and printing of money, it's not even realistic, guys. What we were living in was not realistic. My parents' house they bought it for 25000 in 1973. It's now worth almost $400,000. It's the exact same house, exact same neighborhood. The neighborhood hasn't improved. It's actually gotten worse. It's a very old neighborhood, 1973. Their house really hasn't changed. $400,000. The wealth gap since 1971 has increased dramatically. Now, that's all the bad news. The silver lining in this is there's a brand new economy coming in distributed ledger technology, on-demand liquidity, real-time payments, things like XRP, XLM, VeChain, supply chain management, Bitcoin is a store of value. But the, the essence that we're in right now or the period that we're in right now is extreme speculation. Now we've moved from 2017 where it was completely the wild, wild west, 2020, again, the wild, wild west, but then it's starting to get normalized. We went from wild, wild west to now banks feverishly trying to get involved in Bitcoin. The Bitcoin ETF, getting exposure to this new speculative asset. So that's why you have to be very, very careful. It's very speculative. But I do believe in my heart of hearts that this is a great opportunity to get a budget in place, develop some financial literacy, get some financial discipline, and maybe invest in some of these speculative assets. Now, once you do that, you take sovereignty of your own wealth and you start to move your wealth through the system like the richest man in Babylon. When you make profits with things like this, especially the unrealistic profits you can make in cryptocurrency, I pull mine out. I pull 50% of my portfolio. If it hits my exit targets by using Merlin, the smartest way to track your crypto, you can download it 30 days for free down below. I'm the co-founder and creator. We have customer service. If you're like, what's an exit plan? We have videos. We have customer service. We can help you set it up. We can make sure that you have the tools you need to understand when the markets are going up. Everybody's going to come rushing in, and that's when you should be exiting. I always exit when everybody's excited, and I buy when everybody's panicking. I do the opposite of every single human being. Not every single human being, most human beings. Wall Street wins 100% of the time. So I pull, I pull mine down. I insure my wealth. I like to use insurance. I use Index Universal Life. I max one of my Index Universal Life policies. I only share with you exactly what I'm doing. I diversify in business, precious, or business information, technology, attention, and education, precious metal, silver, and then I'll be heading into real estate pretty heavy over the next couple of years for depreciation and appreciation. I'm not really worried about the doors or income. It's a long-term strategy. So those things that I'm personally doing, guys. So just get prepared. Uh, the economy is in a very tough position. The middle class needs about one hundred and fifty dollars to $160,000 a year just to be middle class. But the public and private sector are going to need to come together and we're investing in the in the innovative technologies that are going to be the new financial system. 
but make sure you do your research. Make sure you understand that everything that you invest in should have an exit plan. I always say everything you get into should have an exit plan, except your relationships. So I hope this information helps you in the description down below. There's all the information you need. Also in my social media platform, click the link and I'll see you on the inside. Warriors, rise, get your shit together. Love you guys.